<laughs> whoa, whoa, did you see that? That was crazy. Woo -wee. When you got lightning in reverse, man, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the court was in reverse. We got lightning in reverse. Everything's in reverse right now. I mean, did you see the Olympic ceremony? Wow, talk about summoning insanity. Dionysus, hello. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Rex Bear. How the heck are you? Beautiful day today out here in Southern Colorado. And do I have some amazing news to share with you? So buckle up, buttercup. Let's go. Let's just jump right in. Did you know that a comet is approaching Earth that is going to be so bright, it's going to be brighter than the stars this fall? And it's Comet Atlas. It could become as brilliant as Venus. We'll see when it happens, if it happens. But in a year, we've already been treated to the great North American solar eclipse in April and one of the greatest displays of Northern Lights in the past 500 years. What other amazing celestial attractions might 2024 have in store for us? Well, how about Comet Atlas? And let me do a quick screen share with you. This is space.com. Let's look at the beautiful comet here that was picked up the virtual telescope project capturing the C 2023 A3 Comet Atlas pictured May 5th, 2024 from Sassano, Italy. Cheers. I just got some more ESS 60 from C60Evo.com. This stuff is awesome. So what I like to do is I'll put a spoonful in my coffee in the morning when I get up and the energy levels and the clarity factor is exceptional. I also did some research about how powerful of an antioxidant ESS 60 is, and there's nothing that even comes close, folks. You can get yours directly through the link if you click the link in the video description box. It's c60evo.com slash leap project. You can even get it in pill form now. They've got an MCT coconut oil, avocado oil, as well as extra virgin olive oil. The extra virgin olive oil is their most potent. You can also get serums for your face, this is pretty cool. I'm going to try this. Look at this. Hair Renewal Duo. Oh, yeah. I'll let you know about that. This is their facial serum. It's dual activated. The stuff is great. Kristen loves this stuff also. If you don't like to take it in liquid form, you can also get it in pill form. How cool is that? Your pets are going to love it. Your cats, your dogs. We've got bacon flavor for them. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Use the code EVLP for an additional discount when you click that link. And let's get back to the podcast right now. Halo! Thank you for this. Let's take a look at it from over here. It's going to get within 0.39 astronomical units, or about 36 million miles away from the sun, when it could become visible to the naked eye. That's pretty cool. This is very interesting, and I'd strongly recommend you read this when you get an opportunity or just listen to the excerpt from me. New study reveals comet airburst evidence from 12,800 years ago. And it uses shock quartz grains with fissures filled with melt glass. Researchers continue to expand the case for the younger Dryas impact hypothesis. The idea proposes that a fragmented comet smashed into the Earth's atmosphere 12,800 years ago, causing a widespread climate shift that, amongst other things, led to the abrupt reversal of Earth's warming trend and anomalous near glacial period called the Younger Dryas. Platinum, shock fractured quartz, microspherals, and milk glass widely distributed in the eastern USA at the Younger Dryas onset 12,800 years ago. Nice! Previous studies have found evidence consistent with global extraterrestrial air bursts impacts at the Younger Dryas onset about 12,800 years ago, the estimated age range was determined using IntCal 13, which is a previous calibration curve rather than the IntCal 20, the current curve. However, that range differs only by 0.4%, so it is retained here. Blippity bloop, blah, blah. These microbursts, they have different locations along the East Coast where they show the data sets and the, you know, the platinum, the melt glass, the microspherals that they discover. And wow. Can you imagine 12,800 years ago, all of a sudden you see all these comets and asteroids and bolides blasting in the skies. You're like, dude, let's head for Darren Kuru in Turkey. They got an underground civilization. Oh, wait. Was it built then? <laughs> so just something to keep an eye on here. Very interesting. More information about this event. We'll keep you posted as more information arrives. 
Now, this is more modern times. So over the past few days, there's been several earthquakes in California. Nothing new, but the magnitude of three or four or higher does cause some sound for alarm. Now, this is also interesting because just a couple hours ago, hot off the press, doomsday fish found dead in California days before earthquake struck Los Angeles. It's an ore fish. You can also read about it in New York Post. Let's just take a quick look here. Harbinger of doom ore fish found floating off California coast two days before earthquake struck. A massive fish known as a harbinger of doom was found sulking off the coast of California last weekend, marking yet another end of the world forewarning in recent weeks. What makes it even worse? The mystical fish was dead. It's a 12-foot ore fish carcass, rumored to be a sign of impending earthquakes. Why is that? I want to know. So kayakers found it snorkeling and exploring off of San Diego's La Jolla Cove. Let's see here. Why is an ore fish, why is ore fish called doomsday? Now, here we go. Ore fish are sometimes called doomsday fish due to their mythical reputation as predictors of natural disasters or earthquakes. These ore fish have only been spotted in California 20 times since 1901, according to the Times of India. Scientists are excited, though, and that's what's really important. Doom? Eh, well, I mean, if scientists are excited, you know what I mean? So it's a 12-foot long harbinger of doom. <laughs> okay, I want to read why. Let's go to Ocean Conservatory here. Why are ore fish known as doomsday fish? Because they look scary. Ore fish can grow more than 30 feet. Red spines that stick out to form a crown-like cluster. Deep sea dwellers thriving most often in the zone least explored. By scientists to date, the mesopliagic zone, down to 1,000 meters, floating vertically through these dark waters, their silvery reflective bodies help ore fish blend into their surroundings. Okay, so the theories of the ore fish, the name, their long, flat bodies simply resemble oars, and others suggest the name could have come from the rowing motions they make as they swim in such a peculiar way through the water. However, oarfish also have another more alarming nickname, the doomsday fish. Ah! In some areas of the world, these creatures are seen as being harbingers of bad news, particularly disasters of destruction. The legend is that if you see an oarfish, it is a warning sign from higher powers that disasters such as earthquakes are soon to occur. This is according to numerous news reports before Japan's 2011 earthquake, one of the most catastrophic in history, a total of 20 ore fish washed ashore. Now, there are many legends surrounding these creatures. It is rare that humans see these majestic creatures because of how deep they are within the oceans. There you go, oceanconservancy.org. Now, this is also interesting because this is... This needs way more attention in the news, and Japanese authorities released an unprecedented megaquake advisory last week, triggering panic hoarding of supplies, canceled vacations, and diplomatic interruptions. The Indian embassy in Japan also shared a message asking citizens to prepare for natural disasters after the warning. Scientists believe that an earthquake in the underwater Nankai Trough area could cause tremors with a magnitude of nine on the Richter scale, possibly causing catastrophic doom. Changing the song there, it's a little too intense. The warning was shared hours after the powerful earthquake struck off the coast of Japan on Thursday. The first had a magnitude of 6.9, followed by a 7.1 magnitude tremor. The twin quakes triggered a tsunami warning, but ultimately saw no major damage or deaths, thankfully, being reported. However, experts say a mega quake with an 8 magnitude or higher could strike Japan in the coming days. Or fish Japan, California earthquakes is the big one coming. And it could it be, could it possibly be connected to this? Earth's core has slowed down so much it's moving backwards, scientists confirm. Here's what it could mean. This is an article from CNN Science. They got the information from nature.com article, inner core backtracking by seismic waveform change reversals. 
I've gone over this with you several times, and I'm just going to read the abstract again. And we're going to look at a couple of the images where they use seismographic data uh, to capture the motion and the movements and the outline of the Earth's inner core. Now, clearly, we can't go down there. So they use these seismic waves from earthquakes and technology to create a model of how the core is moving. And it's kind of like a blob, they say. And according to the article, according to the data, it's slowed down so much, it's potentially reversed. And we're seeing a ton of earthquakes, a ton of volcanic activity. And then we're going back about 12,000 years ago, 13,000 years ago, looking at the Younger Dryas event and that comet strike, which is associated with Comet Enki. Fascinating how somebody by the name of, um, I don't remember his first name, but his last name is Enki in the late 1700s, early 1800s, observed the orbit of this comet, and his last name was Enki. Well, this comet is most likely connected with the numerous bull-eyed blasts and explosions that took place over the Earth about 13,000 years ago, this precursor to the Younger Dryas event. Volcanoes, earthquakes, comets, bull-eyed strikes. Oh, yeah, it's doomlicious, is it not? So anyway, this is the article that refers to it. Let's read it to you real quick. The solid inner core suspended within the liquid outer core and anchored by gravity has been inferred to rotate relative to the surface of Earth or change over years to decades based on changes in seismograms for repeating earthquakes and explosions. It has a rich inner structure and influences the pattern of outer core convection and therefore Earth's magnetic field. Here we compile 143 distinct pairs of repeating earthquakes, many within 16 multiplets built from 121 earthquakes between 1991 and 2023 in the South Sandwich Islands. We analyze their inner core penetrating PKIKP waves recorded on the medium aperture rays in northern North America. We document that many multiplets exhibit waveforms that change and then revert at later times to match earlier events. The matching waveforms reveal times at which the inner core reoccupies the same position relative to the mantle as it did at some time in the past. The pattern of matches together with previous studies demonstrates that the inner core gradually super rotated from 2003 to 2008 and then from 2008 to 2023 sub rotated two to three times more slowly back through the same path. These matches enable precise and unambiguous tracking of inner core progression and regression. The resolved different rates of forward and backward motion suggest that new models will be necessary for the dynamics between the inner core, outer core, and mantle. Halo! So basically they're saying every 70 years, this thing slows down so much, it reverses. We need to keep track of these 70-year cycles with the climate as well, the magnetosphere. I want to uh, see what the Schumann resonance is. The Schumann resonance has been all over the place the past several years. And not only is Japan threatening of a mega quake, California is getting rocked by earthquakes. That's nothing new. But this is new. This is new. Over 1,000 earthquakes happened in Texas this summer. Here's what a seismologist says is causing them. Earthquake activity in Texas has gone up exponentially over the past few decades but not because of naturally occurring tectonics. The summer Texas has registered over 1,000 earthquakes. This is from KVUE ABC. A few of the stronger ones, magnitude four and above, made headlines in late July. The large number can seem staggering because Texas isn't known for earthquakes. Why have there been so many? Most of the time, the earthquakes are small. They can't be felt. But of the years, as the years have passed, higher magnitude quakes have become more common. Alexandros Savatis, a seismologist, research professor, and overseer of the TexNet earthquake catalog. From the tectonic point of view, we don't expect earthquakes in the state of Texas, he said. Texas is located on the intraplate of the continent, which isn't supposed to see a lot of seismic activity. But due to changes in the stress state of the subsurface, we start having earthquakes, he said. Now, this is happening mostly due to oil and gas operations. There's two main ways this happens, saltwater disposal and fracking. During oil and gas drilling operations, saltwater is produced. To dispose of it, it's put back into the ground by way of a well, which is very deep. Meanwhile, according to Independent Petroleum Association of America, hydraulic fracturing, which is called fracking, is the process of injecting liquid and materials at high pressure to create small fractures within tight shell formations to stimulate the production and extract energy from an underground well 
after the drilling has ended. And as I've shown you before, Google Maps, you can look at those areas in West Texas, and it just looks like something out of Lord of the Rings, uh, that battle between Baldemar, who is it? It's it's really bad. And I've been out there, and the smell is is terrible. And I've talked to people that live out there, and much respect. And I just find it kind of alarming. It, it is a bit alarming. But hey, I mean, maybe it's just short term. And I, I know that fuel right now is essential, you know, gasoline, petroleum, I get it. So I'm not on the green bandwagon because right now those green technologies, when you really dive into how they're created, in my opinion, they're not very green. So I get it. It's one of those, it's one of those uh, double-edged swords, I guess, metaphorically speaking, but just something to keep your eyes on. Whoa, whoa, did you see that? That was crazy. Woo -wee. When you got lightning in reverse, man, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the court was in reverse. We got lightning in reverse. Everything's in reverse right now. I mean, did you see the Olympic ceremony? Wow, talk about summoning insanity, Dionysus, hello. And what's even crazier is the rituals they were performing thousands of years ago made that look tame whoa ladies and gentlemen it's a wild ride out here but you gotta love it right you gotta love it welcome to earth it's a trip it's gonna be a trip that's for sure and wherever you go there you are i hope you have a beautiful day check us out on patreon we've got exclusive content on there also check us out on leakproject.com we're doing a big update on leakproject.com and i have thousands of interviews there long format interviews guests that you're not going to see anywhere else information you're not going to get anywhere else and if you want to be a podcaster if you want to be a social media creator and if you want to change the world i can help you also my friend jay matt can. jay matt is awesome he has gnostic tv what we'll do is we'll put you through a four-week course and help you on track to become the change the world needs to see.